Five, four, three, two, one. It's the new Panic Room. It's the show other shows want to be, and the show that authors want to be on. Da! Radio show is brought to you by HellboundBooks.com. <laughs> well, good evening, one and all. It is the new Panic Room episode 126, and it's. Uh, but I never, I never introduced myself. It's just every fucker else, but not me. So I'm James H. Longmore, uh, author, publisher. Um, media personality, and it's me and my dog actually tonight. I don't know, he's snuck in and he's he's sort of here and he's with me. So uh, it's a shame it's not a it's not visual because it is really sweet. And it is. It's um, I think <laughs> I think it is still January, isn't it? January the tenth. And yes, 126 episodes, which is kind of scary. 
Um, it ne- never ceases to amaze me. We're still doing it after all this. Like, normally, I get I get bored so quickly with stuff that um, you know I'm looking at maybe past show six to be honest with you. But and I think a lot of a lot of that has got to be down to my um, my partner in crime and co-host and um, uh, foil. I think is probably a good word. God bless her. God bless her. So we're going we're going to bring her on. <laughs> this very evening i'm good i'm good i'm a little bit frazzled you know and uh um but i'm good and i i don't have a monster but i, I do have some excellent 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 no i just i i've been holding off i thought no you know i i, I just had a, a, a one of those days just like doing lots of different things and yeah, I am frazzled as well. I've been up since uh, a stupid o'clock this morning. I was awake well before the alarm. Um, yeah, it, 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 I'll, you know, you shouted at me the last time I yawned for the show, so I thought I'd better do something about it. I'll be in trouble again. And do you know, uh, I was, heaven forbid. I got up at like 9.30 this morning. Can you believe it? Me, 9.30. What, a.m.? Wow. Yeah. Well, it's because there was somebody at the door and there were like five dogs barking. But, you know, I still woke That's up. That's going to do it, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. That's going to do it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. We get that. I mean, you know, you, you know I'm, I'm sure. And it's usually the religious people. Um, and <laughs> they, were, they, they were, I'm sure, they hide around the corner. They must know. <laughs> they must know when I go to the toilet. Yeah. <laughs> and the, literally, the minute the minute I've sat down, you know, <laughs> and this, the, on the, and because the dogs go mad and and that and look, yeah, you know, I'm 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 in the middle of a dump. I do not want to talk about Jesus, okay? Seriously, I just save you know, <laughs> I, tr- I try to be polite, but you know, fuck off. I'm I'm trying to have a poo. <laughs> You know, I've scheduled this bit of time between my hectic work schedule to, to, to you know, to, to launch a load, as it were. I'm knocking on my door to try and sell me the bike, tell me about G and the No. Just no, don't do that. You know, I'm not enjoying because we, we, have a, we have a sign that's at no solicitors, which I think keeps a lot of the salespeople away, although the, the odd one tries to sneak through. But, you know, I think that they, they don't think they're, they're soliciting. Well, no, you are. You, a, you're disturbing me. B, you're knocking on my door and say, fuck off, I'm having a poo, which I think is fair. And Do anywho, you know, anywho, well, hmm? I, I was going to say that me and my son were out walking um, 
I don't know, not too long ago, and there were these um, Jehovah's Witnesses, and they were, they just passed us by, and I, and I kept thinking, I, I was a little offended that they did not try to, you know, save my soul or anything. They, you know, yeah. that's their job. That's what they do. Well, I'll tell you, they, back back where I'm from, uh, they have um, uh, Jehovah's bystanders, and they, they witness nothing. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a good one that it's a good one it's an oldie but goodie that one but um so anyway speaking of um absolute complete waste of fucking space right now in a number of states the laws allow a baby to be born from his or her mother's womb in the ninth month it is wrong it has to change <laughs> It's funny, everybody sort of hang, hangs the hat on the fact that it's the nine-month thing, which, you know, I mean, yeah. Um, but, you know, his or her's mother's womb, where else are they going to be born from? Really? <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> you know, it's like, you know, what, what, what is going on in your brain? From? I mean, obviously, you know, the, the, we were on the, is it day 20 of the, the, the partial government shutdowns? Hundred thousand government employees not been paid and still won't be. Paid. And he, he's, I mean, he's okay. He's, he's got his, his billions of daddy's money and money he's extorted and Russian money, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, obviously, if I'm, if I'm not on the air next week, I've been assassinated. But hey, whatever. <laughs> um, so he's okay. But all these, they're, they're not getting paid. And some, have, like I think, um, Homeland Security, I think uh, customs people have have to go to work. So they're, they're all, you know, these, these people have got, you know, they've got families to feed, they've got mortgages to pay, all, all this lot. And he's he's talking about hunkering down for, you know, forever if necessary. Um, and all off his wall, this is the wall that, again, quote, unquote, and I'm, I'm going to dig it up for next week, who said, during his election campaign, Mexico is going to pay for the wall. And then Mexico said, mm, no, we're not. And that was it. You know, it was just like, oh, 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 bugger. I was, I was hoping you would, to be honest. Um, and I, I came up with, a, I think, a, a great idea to get around. What they need to, they need to talk to Lego. Yeah. And what they need is to a build the thing out of Lego, and C sponsorship. Yeah. Because you know it's big. Well, it just you can imagine the you know promotional opportunities for Lego, and what they can do. You know, one the wall obviously you know it's made out of Lego, but they, they build this wall, but then they can sprinkle those little those little bits around the perimeter. So anybody oh, trying God. to sneak in is going to tread on those. Yeah, and I mean you don't need landmines. Those things are more lethal than landmines. Any, anyone, any anyone who's a parent can can. You know, testify to the. You tread on those; they hurt. Those little bit, those little, and they get stuck in your. And they, oh, they do. They do hurt. <laughs> Speaking of kids, so, I would. So there up. you go. There you are. No, so just. I know Donald. Donald Trump probably listens into the show. Uh, thoughts and prayers, Donald. Um, there you go. You know, that's your wall, uh, your wall problem solved. Like uh, Lego. We'll Lego. deal with it. So uh, le- there you go. There you go. <laughs> Sort of, Jim. Jim <laughs> that's it. Solve, solve the crisis. So, so you you were going to say were you going to say something informed or no, probably not? But go on anyway. No, no, it's not informed at all. It's just about <laughs> kids in general. You know, you saw that post I put up today that you know being a parent of a teenage son is just all day long. You're just walking around going, "What is wrong with you?" I think I do it like twenty times a day. What What are you doing? What is I, wrong with you? And, yeah. By the time by the my son's age, which is sixteen and a half now, you stop asking. You oh, just yeah. you you just don't bother asking because the only answer you get, especially if, if it's of the male variety, is uh, mm-hmm. that's it. Uh. <laughs> you know, there's some there's sometimes there's sometimes he you know he he's being extra surly and you know so are you okay? Uh, is there something upsetting you? Yeah. Something. Uh, I don't remember. Everything okay with, with the my... girlfriend? Uh, school? Uh, I said, you, so, so, I know, so, I said, so you're just being extra surly today. Yeah. And that's it. That, that's a conversation. Uh, but, but 
at least we, you know we we do communicate at least on that level. <laughs> Well, you know what I was doing the uh, when I was walking all the time, and uh, we uh-huh. we do close to like five miles a day, me and my son, and <clears throat> that was literally literally his time just to talk. And you know, I was barely tuning him in or whatever, but he would talk like continually the whole time. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. funny. My, so my 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 daughter's like that. She she literally from the minute she wakes up to the minute she goes to she, she chat 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 chat. Yeah. My son. Absolutely. I remember I, 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 a couple of years ago um, we went to see Suicide Squad. And my, my daughter was a little bit young for it at the time. So just me and the boy went and we went. I took him to Hooters. It would be, be great. So I'd say, we're going to have dinner at Hooters and what have you, you know, sort of father-son thing. And honestly, the conversation was, it was difficult. <laughs> it was literally one word answers that, mm-hmm, yeah. Oh, it's not, God. oh, it was the longest sort of hour and a bit ever. Whereas, oh, you know, with 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 with, okay. with my daughter, you know, when we sit down as a family to to, to you know for dinner, you know, something uh-huh. you have to say, just 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 let somebody else speak. You know, you have to teach her how <laughs> not dominating the conversation because she will. She will just go on and on and on and on and on, which is is it can be. It be entertaining, but it just you know if, if obviously other people want to speak it. You know? <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. No. Oh. So, uh, hmm? anywho, both anywho, my- anywho, we digress as usual. Um, I, I'm I'm assuming we have a show. You know, if you've done your job, which you always do, and you do it admirably, um, we should have a show this evening. So, what have, what have we got on this evening? Mm. I, You're drinking, are I, you? I, You're just. Mm-hmm, no, I'm mm-hmm. not. And I'm going to apologize now. I cannot stop coughing, so I keep muting myself, and I'm hoping that it's not too disruptive. Disrupt, yeah. Anyway, <coughs> tonight. I'm starting in every I know, and I'm I'm not even sick. That's the bad part, but I still can't freaking get over this stupid cough. But tonight we have USA Today bestselling action and adventure author Ernie Dempsey. And um, later on in the show, we'll have award-winning author of urban fantasy, multi-genre, and southern gothic tales, Nancy A. Collins. Wow. Wow. Well, well shall, shall we bring – let's bring Ernie on. I I'm, I'm, dying, I'm dying, to, dying to meet him. So um, if you'd like to bring him on, we'll, we'll, we'll get a cheer going. All right, USA Today bestselling action adventure author Ernie Dempsey. Yeah. How's that for an introduction, it's sir? Huh? <laughs> it's, a lo- it's a lot to process. Uh, you know, first of all, the music, I I can see why you guys pay your ASCAP dues with all that <laughs> all that licensed music you're running, and then. Then the the thing about the people knocking on your door when you're taking a dump is uh, is so on point, and and I think they don't realize that when you're doing that, it's sort of its own spiritual thing if you're doing it correctly. Uh huh. So if they knew you were doing that, they could just buzz off, you know, because you're already <laughs> there. You're already having that spiritual moment. Exactly. And, uh, like that that. You, know, you you have achieved nirvana, which is is that's you know, right. That's exactly wonderful. Right. And I and and then I thought it was really interesting. I was taking notes as I was listening to you guys. The the Jehovah's Witnesses ignoring uh, ignoring her was funny because that was like that <laughs> Seinfeld episode where George was wanting to get you know picked into that uh, that sunshine cult or whatever, and they wouldn't they wouldn't pick him. They like they picked his boss to be in the cult, <laughs> but they were. Uh, the sunshine cleaners or something like that. And so uh, it's, it was really, that was funny to hear you talk about that, that they ignored you <laughs> because it reminds me of yeah, that it, Seinfeld episode. It's, it's a bit soul-destroying to be ignored by Jehovah's Witnesses, to be honest. I mean, very I mean, strange, how, how, yeah. How, how crappy must you be to be <laughs> pass, passed by by Jehovah's Witnesses? No, 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 just you know? don't, don't, don't make eye contact with her. Just keep going. She's, she's not our kind. <laughs> she's she's not our material. She's now, beyond. It, she's beyond it, redemption. It's uh, <laughs> right. So it's, it's Extina. Is that right? 
Is that, that am is I, right. what yep. am I? Yep. So yep. you said you live in Tennessee? I do. I do. Yeah. What, where do you where do you live in Tennessee? <clears throat> I'm in uh, Bristol, which is oh I no kidding. That's... I'm like I'm I'm down in Chattanooga, so I'm like three hours from you. But yeah, yeah. I used to live now. I um I used to live over in like even further down. Uh, oh, where was I? Manchester area. Like you know, oh yeah, you know. I have a buddy that lives there. Yeah, yeah. It's much. It's so much. It's so beautiful here, though. I mean, it wasn't so beautiful in Manchester, but it's beautiful here. It's, uh, Oh yeah, yeah, Bristol, Johnson City, that whole Kingsport, that whole area is awesome. It's beautiful. It is. It's, I'm, I'm digging it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. But that's well, thanks for I having me on. I'll talk to you guys again some other time. That's not funny. Says <laughs> <laughs> with a giggle. Do you know, there's there's there's, there's always one. There's always one. <laughs> yeah, there's always one. <laughs> So, Ernie, um, you, you are here to talk to us about the book, The Forbidden Temple. Um, great tagline, some doors should remain unopened. Um, to, tell, us, tell us a bit more about it, please. Yeah, so The Forbidden Temple... I mean, if you, want, uh, if you want to. <laughs> I'm not no, forcing yeah, it's you. Fine. No, it's okay. Um, <laughs> I, feel, I feel a little, a, a little forced. Um, no, it's cool. I... I I wrote this story because um, I, I've been wanting to do a, an adventure in uh, in India for a while, and uh, and I you know I I write archaeological thrillers, so stuff like you know the Indiana Jones type things, national oh, treasure fantastic. type stuff, and uh, yeah, and so uh, but India, I've, I've studied a lot of different religions and a lot of different uh, cultures in 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 my life, uh, but India was one that I hadn't spent a lot of time with, and so. I I dove pretty deep into it and uh, and found a, a fascinating mystery that's kind of ongoing still right now with a a, a golden temple that's there in Kerala in uh, the state of Kerala and uh, it's it's this temple that's it's covered in a sheet of gold basically and it's got all these vaults inside it I think there are six of six of them and. They, uh, there's the Indian Supreme Court has given permission to open five of the vaults, but uh, and they've pulled out like 23 billion dollars worth of loot and and whatnot. But wow, they have not. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. And this stuff's been in there for like four or five hundred years, six hundred years, something like that. Um, but it's it's weird because they won't give permission to open one of the vaults, which is called vault B uh, because that vault is sealed from the inside. So whoever sealed it died inside there probably unless there's a secret way in. And then uh, it also comes with a curse. And so the, the curse is supposedly one that will wreak devastation on on the whole planet if that vault is open and so they've been uh they've been treading with with caution in, the, in regards to that one but they estimate they're they're i don't know where they're getting these estimates from because they pulled you know like 23 22 billion dollars out of the other ones but they're estimating that the value of vault b what's inside that is you know, exponentially more than what they found in all the others combined. Some are saying a trillion, wow. some are saying half a trillion. Yes, yeah, so, but they, you know, I don't know how they're coming up with that. But it's a. Oh, wait, is, is that in? Is thing. that in gold? Is it in gold? Is it in jewels? I mean, what? What? What yeah, are? Yeah, there was a lot of. Yeah, there was a lot of gold and jewels wow. in the other vault, and uh, it was, it was, I guess, uh, religious offerings, like mm -hmm. uh, like Hindu offerings of some kind, but. Yeah, it's a strange, strange thing, and uh, they've got, they've had these, this, uh, you know, Indian commando team that is, it was running security for a long time, and recently they they uh, pulled those commandos off, and now it's just like local cops that are running security. So all of those things together, <laughs> really, like it was, it was really uh, good timing for me because. I was uh, it, it all worked out to make for a really good adventure and really a, a fascinating a fascinating mystery behind all of it and yeah. I I'm glad that they hadn't opened the the vault yet at least because um 
I can still sell some copies. So if they ever <laughs> give them permission to open that and we find out what's really inside, then my story will be screwed. But <laughs> for now, it's, well, it's, yeah, it's, not necessarily. <laughs> You know, you mentioned Deanna Jones, and I have to say, and I get, I catch hell for this all the time. People say, have you seen this movie? Have you seen this movie? And most of the time, my answer is no. Like Jaws, I had not seen it, and James, like, said, I'm not going to talk to you anymore until you watch Jaws. So he forced me to And Hellraiser as well. She's never seen Hellraiser until recently. Unforgivable. I had not seen that. And just, I don't know, two weeks ago, three weeks ago, the boyfriend made me watch it, and it was a pretty good movie. I, I, I have which, to admit, which I one? That. Which one did you? Which one did you watch? I, I, I don't know. I'm thinking it was the first one. I'm not, you, you know, 100 percent sure. Oh, <laughs> seriously? Good it has to have been the well, first were, one. <laughs> <laughs> well, there were three, and then a footnote one. Uh, because yeah, I'm pretty sure. It was the, the, the 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 Crystal Skulls, while a fascinating uh, fascinating mystery, and then. Really, really interesting story behind the Crystal Skulls. They they really crossed the line with their fan base in bringing in uh, the aliens. Spoiler alert! Uh, bringing in the aliens yeah. at the end because you know it's 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 kind of interesting. I've had talks about this with other writers in our genre, but they you know why why there was such an out like a big pushback from the fan base about the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, and I said, well. It's okay if you have relics that have mysterious powers. It's okay if you have these artifacts that have these mysterious powers. But when you go when you go to the alien side of things, you're jumping genres. You've you've changed inadvertently. You've changed genres, and so mm-hmm. that you know now you're now all of a sudden you're in sci-fi, and people signed up for historical fiction or archaeological thrillers, and so. Now they're in sci-fi and they're a little put off by that, and so uh, that's my theory anyway. And, and so, um, and then I, I don't think a lot of people like Shia LaBeouf either. But yeah, they're great movies, though. The series is great. Yeah, do you know, I actually, I actually watched the, the Crystal Skull again quite recently because I wanted to. Um, and whilst I mean, to be fair, I remember seeing the the very first Indiana Jones movie back in the day in the movies. It was that was just like. Fantastic! It was it, it, it as as they designed it to be a heart back to the old the, the Saturday morning you know thrillers we used to watch as kids. Um, yeah. I know Crystal. It, it was I mean Aliens notwithstanding, it was it was a good old romp. I mean it had all the elements in yeah. it and, and Sheila Booth not notwithstanding. I, to be fair, I, I don't mind him. <laughs> But, um, I don't mind him either. But a lot of people complained about him. But yeah, I don't mind him. I'm with you. I'm with you. Yeah, it, 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 it worked. I mean, for me, it worked. Alien, it, like you say, yeah. it was a bit... And, but for me, it was more about... the, the they had Literally, they ticked all the boxes. They had the, the you know the race against the Nazis in the jungle. They had the kill of this, yeah. kill of that, peril, danger, etc. So it worked. I enjoyed it. It was, it was a good good couple of hours. Oh, long. I did I mean, too. And everybody, everybody complained about the, the refrigerator scene. Where he, he survived a, nu- a nuclear blast in a, ref- but it, it, it's just it is it's fantasy. It's, you know, so so what? You know, just you yeah. know, it's not meant to be realistic, people. You know, <laughs> right? That's right. You know, no, I, it's and I'm, with, I'm with you. Yeah, that's right. And that, and you've got to take a little bit of liberty with fiction to make the story work. And but I'm with you. I I enjoyed it, but I I just know there was a lot of pushback from a lot of fans of it, but I actually, I liked the story and I didn't have a problem with the alien stuff because I mean, hell, uh, you know, ancient aliens on history channel is doing just fine. And it works, it works into the whole historical, you know, uh, scheme of things. So, yeah, well, there's a new, there's a new series just started on, it could be history channel. It could be national Geographic channel, uh, the project blue book, which is kind of a mix of, 
document. I've, I've, I'll actually DVR it. I've, I've got the first one on the DVR now. Uh, sort of, a, it's like the, the the Mars series, where it's a mixture of documentary and um, dramatization, which I, I love both seasons of that. So I'm I'm looking forward yeah. to that. It's based on you know government open government UFO files, etc. So kind of almost uh-huh. like I guess documentary stroke X files. So I'm, I'm I'm looking forward to that. It may be rubbish, and once I've watched it, we can review it on the show. So. I watch this space, as they say. Speaking of uh, speaking of aliens, I find this odd for me. Whenever I, if I fall asleep watching YouTube, no matter what I'm watching, I can wake up to aliens. Like they'll be playing aliens on like YouTube, and I'm like, how did I get from whatever it was I was watching to aliens? It, I don't. I think it's I think it's a conspiracy, and I'm about ready to uh, expose you know the aliens for you know. <laughs> well, well, hold Maybe on I'm to your hat. Because, okay. yeah. <laughs> well, the government i i have on good i have on good authority that the government is going to be releasing more information this year about on their aliens? their yeah about their studies. Well, you know, because they released they released a bunch of stuff. What was it? Uh, 2017. Washington Post ran a big article about it, and it's really funny because it just got I got brushed like swept under the rug. But yeah, they basically wow. said, yep, we've been studying this stuff and researching it. And there's more sites like uh, area 51. And now wow. there's going to be more stuff coming. I, I hear this year. So it's really interesting. I don't know what to make of it, but I think mm-hmm. it's, uh, it's certainly interesting to read about and hear. So, well, Ernie, I want to hear more about the Forbidden Temple. Do you have a Do you have an excerpt to read for us? Oh, I thought you were going to have somebody else read it. <laughs> but yeah, yeah again, again. <laughs> we talked what? about this before. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I can read it if you want me to. I just don't like reading because I um out loud to people. But yeah, sure, I can. I can pull it up on my phone. Yeah. I think There's I. Nobody I think I. We, yeah, there's What'd nobody listening. It's, it's just it's just us. There's nobody listening. <laughs> just you guys. Okay. Well, you said you wanted like a five minute uh, a five minute excerpt or something. Yeah. Yes, sir. Mhm. Yep. Okay. Let me start it here. I sent you that whole thing, but I don't know how fast I can read that. So you can cut <laughs> me off if you want to. Okay. Doctor okay. John, uh, you are you ready? Yes, sir. It's all yours. Uh, okay, I'm a. Uh, this is this is the prologue, so this sort of sets up the whole thing. Doctor John Portman couldn't believe his eyes. It was the first time he'd stood at the gates of the Sri Padmawase Temple in Kerala, but the sight of the shimmering golden structure and the waning light of the sun was something that would never get old. Precious metal coating the building seemed to offer a brighter. Illumination and even the fiery center of the solar system. The golden reliefs of Hindu deities and other important figures sprang to life, covering nearly every square inch of the upper exterior. Outside the entrance, however, was a stark contrast. Ordinary city streetlights hung over cracked, hard-packed dirt sidewalks. The clay-tiled roofs looming over buildings next to the temple seemed out of place, as did their crumbling, haphazardly painted walls. The entryway into the temple, too, was nothing eye-catching. Ordinary white walls surrounded the darkened archway into the ancient building. The bright white paint seemed a bizarre choice next to the center where the arched door led beneath a miniaturized golden mountain. He didn't care about the mismatched exterior decor of the entrance. Getting in was the point. Not standing around outside in the Indian heat wondering about architectural and design aesthetics. Portman was one of the foremost experts on ancient Indian mythology and history. His understanding of Indian culture and the old Vedic texts was so vast that he'd been offered multiple jobs to teach at universities and museums in Mumbai and across the region. John had, of course, turned them down. He much preferred the lifestyle he'd built in Cambridge and had no intentions of moving to a new home. Even when he remotely considered the notion of sweltering heat here beat the idea back into the shadows. As an unnecessary reminder, Abita's sweat rolled down his right temple, clung to his jaw for a second, and then dropped to the dry cobblestones at his feet. He unconsciously reached for a white handkerchief, 
in his breast pocket and dab at his forehead. What is the delay? He asked the man to his right. Anik Lagari shrugged. Security at this site is very tight, sir. I'm not going to do the accents all the time, or I just wanted to give you a taste. Okay. Anik was one of John's liaisons on this trip to India, one of the most, on most of his trips to India. He'd been an extremely useful resource, and John frequently leaned on the younger man for assistance in cultural matters, such as the proper way to order tea. John tried to fit in as best he could wherever he went. Anik made Anik made that simple enough for him. It helped that the younger assistant spoke proper English, even carrying the accent without flaw. That was more than he could say for the other man standing on his opposite side. Rian Chanand was also a good assistant, helpful and eager to get things done. He was, however, less the academic and more of a brute force type. The tall Indian hovered over the shorter Dr. Portman, standing five inches over six feet tall. His bronze, muscle-strewn arms glistened with sweat in the afternoon heat. Rayange listened to the conversation with his jaw set firm as he stared ahead at the gate. Something about his gaze might have been unsettling to anyone who didn't know the man, but John and Anik simply assumed it was grumpy Rayange. They are clearing us to go in, sir, Anik answered the professor's next question. I'm aware that's what they're doing, Anik. I just don't understand what's taking so long. Patience, my good friend, Anik offered a simple smile and patted the older man on the shoulder. It was a gentle gesture, but it still shook the wire frame glasses on John's nose. This is an extremely sacred place to us, even for a world-renowned researcher and historian such as yourself. All protocols must be followed. John reached up and pressed the glasses back up toward his forehead. Indeed, he said, though his voice didn't hold an ounce of sincerity or understanding, it wasn't that he believed himself better than most. He simply wanted out of the oppressive heat. Fortunately, the professor was only required to wait another minute before one of the security guards returned from a building off to the right. John wondered what could have possibly needed to be settled in the little shack to approve his visit when all the necessary channels had already been cleared. He only spent a moment on that thought, knowing it was fruitless and would only exasperate him. The guard handed John his papers and gave a nod. Follow me, sir security guard ordered finally john picked up a small bag lying at his feet his two colleagues hefted similar bags in each hand and started forward through the entrance it wasn't the first time john portman had entered the ancient temple he knew what awaited beyond the gates it was why he was here to analyze the mysterious vaults within and perhaps try to open them the temple was a structure dedicated to worship of lord vishnu one of more more than a hundred centers of worship in that area that gave patronage to that particular deity. It had been built in the medieval era of the former Tamil Empire, construction beginning in the early 7th century. The temple was, was a tremendous source of pride for the people of this region, and the idea that an outsider from England would be given permission to examine anything within smacked some of the locals with stinging suspicion. John, of course, didn't care about that. He had one thing in mind, to get into one of those vaults and find out what awaited beyond the mysterious doors. The Indian government had grant, hadn't granted him permission to open the vaults. That was something John figured would require much deliberation, committee approval, and votes from politicians. In the end, they would deny him the opportunity. However, accidents happen from time to time. Who was to say that he didn't accidentally open one of the vaults while conducting his research? His mind was made up. He had to know what was beyond the vault doors. It was a secret that had been kept for hundreds of years, perhaps more. While his tiny fleck of an ego didn't care about fame and accolades, there was something deeply appealing about becoming the first to open the forbidden vault. The security guard led them around a turn and down a long open-air corridor. White pillars lined the walkway, spaced only a few feet apart, atop a reddish-brown wall that came up to John's midsection. Golden beasts perched on top of the columns faced inward, silently roaring at, at their mirror images on the opposing side. Above them, the ceiling curled into a row, royal blue tiles that stretched from one end of the passage to the other. In the center of the blue line, circular mosaics filled the space with a splash of color, one after another, all the way to the far end of the corridor. John gazed up the spectacular uh, art. Gonna... Oh, no, I was going to say, we're going to have to okay. stop 
Yeah, I know it's awful. No, I wanted no. you to keep going, and no, um, it's okay. <laughs> I think we'll have to have you back, and you know you have to finish the the rest of the excerpt at least. So, what we need to do, we need we need we need we need to get a show that's like nine nine hours long, and just read the whole yes. thing. Yeah, just read I the would whole like that. book. Wouldn't that be brilliant? <laughs> and then then you've got a ready made audio book. You can put it straight out on Audible then. So um, yeah, and then I would uh, do the accents. That, you, would have to. To you would have to. You would have to. <laughs> have you have you um, have you had any of your books um, as your books uh, earlier yet? What was the question? I'm sorry. So have you have you had any of your, any of your books um, done as audio books yet? Yeah. So I did. Um, I, I produced the first. I produced book four and book seven. Uh, I, I hired narrators to do those. Uh, book four, I'm not really that happy with, and neither are my readers. So when the contract expires on that, I'm going to have it redone. But books one through three were uh, the rights were bought by Tantor Media, and they produced those are um, early 2018. So the first Brilliant. three in the yeah. series were done by. Um, yeah, I mean that's a pretty, pretty, pretty cool. Uh, deal to get picked up by them so mm -hmm. that was neat no, we'll see good. what happens with the rest of the series so f five of them are in audio so. fantastic oh that's good that's good so I, was, the other thing, I mean you, you really you don't need narrators you should narrate them yourself <laughs> you're welcome <Yeah. laughs> and, you, and you did you did start to do the accents so I thought that's great you know and, and then you <laughs> you know no, yeah, well, good. I can do, I, yeah. People, yeah, I do accents all the time just to humor myself, and then when I do them in public, people are like, "That's actually pretty good." And I'm like, "Oh, okay." <laughs> but uh, <laughs> you know, I don't, I don't narrate my own books because I've never read one of my own books. I don't read my own work, so wow. I just, uh, I, I have somebody else do it. Yeah, no, I can't, I, I can't stand to read my own work, so I don't. It's, I don't is do that it because in, you, you, you. You know, as you're reading it, you're, you're wanting to tweak it and change it, and or is it that you're scared mm -hmm. you might spot a mistake or two? So I was a, I was a high school guidance counselor for 12 years, and I taught test taking skills every year to uh -huh. students. And the and one of the first things that I used to teach kids and teachers tell kids this too is that your first answer is almost always correct. When you start yeah. second guessing <laughs> yourself, is when you get things wrong. And yeah, and so. Mm -hmm. um, most writers out there will do a rough draft and then they'll go back through it and revise it. And then they'll do it again, like English teachers teach us to do. And that yeah. doesn't work for me. And, and, and honestly, yeah. I did it one time, I did it one time and it was my worst reviewed book that I've ever written. And I'm, wow. uh, I said, I, oh, wow. I said, I'm never doing it again. And, um, and I didn't even really read it, but I did do a revision on it before I sent it to edit. And it was, um, it was poorly received. And uh, I asked a couple of friends about it and they said, you know, it wasn't the same as your first one. It was, it was like, we liked the first one because it felt like your voice. It felt honest and raw and real. Mm -hmm. And the second one felt like it wasn't you at all telling the story. And so I said, you know what? That's oh. great. I needed to know that I'm never doing it again. So when I write the rough draft, that's it. I send it to my editor he sends me wow. my my yeah. He sends me the corrections. I make those corrections. I send it to my second editor. She makes those corrections, and it or uh, she I make her corrections, and then it's done. Like there's no drafts. It's just one one thing, and that's it. So wow, that that's that's an amazing. I that great. Pro I wish I could do that. I I'm one. I will do my my rough draft and then first, second, third draft, you know, until I, I will polish and polish. But, you know, I, I, I don't do that as much as I used to. I sort of learned to get to a point mm. where, right, it's done now. Because, I, I, yeah, you, you could go over it a million times and still tweak it. I mean, every now and then I'll, I'll pick yeah. up, I'll leave, yeah. I'll leave through one of my books or because I'm, I'm I'm vain like that, you know. And, I'll, and I'll, oh, I, I could have yeah. re -re tweaked that, I could have tweaked that, and it's just... No, don't. You know, you, you have to learn when to stop. Otherwise, you just yeah. end up writing one or, really, really, really well-polished book, and that's it, you know. Well, yeah. James, you just have to, you have to get to the point where you realize that you piss excellence, right? <laughs> like, you, wow. you piss excellence. <laughs> like Rick, like, uh, Ricky Bobby. 
That's from Talladega <laughs> Nights. Uh, well, well, I piss excellent. I mean, that's it. Yeah, that's, that's it's a good what film. you have to realize. But it's well, funny when uh, I when I was. <laughs> what were you saying? No, I was going to say. I mean, you speak to uh, pretty much uh, you're the first one, not, but uh, you speak to speak to a lot of writers, and you know, the self confidence thing is is one of the biggest bugbears. Of, of most writers, yeah. you know, is that I've written it, and I, I will. I mean, I, I may well piss excellence, but I I get to a point where I usually about the halfway mark, and I this is I think this is shit. This is awful. Yeah. You know, and, yeah. and I, I, I to oh, push I through that thing, barrier yeah. and finish is that yeah. is the I mean I can yeah. start. I, I I could have you know a couple of dozen half novels. You know, that are up to that point, great. I love them. Too. It's, but you know, like pushing through that that central point, that's that's the hard work, and just getting to finish yep. it, and it, it's that is so because I, I for that second half I hate it, and I would rather oh, yeah. do anything. I would rather go you know, just you know <laughs> bury my head in the in the sand or shoot myself in the face. I'd rather do anything than finish <laughs> this bloody book, you know. Um, it always makes me feel good to hear other people say that because I mean, I just finished another, you know, like the next one I finished two weeks ago and halfway through it, I was just like, this is terrible. I'm not, I, I just yeah. need to scrap <laughs> it and start a new project. Yeah. It's, it, we're all there, man. It's, we, we may piss excellence, but we, none of us know it. I think that's the key. We, we don't know some don't know how good we are, you know, and I'm not, not being big headed mm-hmm. about that, you know, and no, not at all, we, no. we, we all have it. I, I said, this is some, some of my favorite independent authors, some, some of the guys that, and girls that we publish and, you know, literally day, you know, most days, you know, this is terrible. I'm going to pack in and my writing's terrible. And, and it's not that, you know, we want a pat on the head and, you know, that we, we, we genuinely believe that, yeah. that what we're yeah. shooting out is crap. terrible. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. You could get 500 five-star reviews, but that one two-star yeah. review <laughs> or three, because yep. you know, you throw out the one stars cause those are just trolls, but you throw out like, but you get that yeah. two or three star review and you're like, Oh yeah. But er- yeah. Ernie, you got like 500 five star. Yeah. No, but, they're all wrong. I got this. Yeah, I got this two star review. That that that's the one that makes you want to pack in. You know, you just got that one. Oh no! So there's what one person out of five hundred didn't like my book, so I'm just not not going to write again. I'm just, I'm just not. I'm, I'm no I'm, no. That's I'm done. You know. Yeah. I hate to do this, but we're just about out of time for our first segment, and um, oh. I want to ask you. I, Oh, I know you have to promise to come back, Ernie, and we will have you on for a full show. And I want accents. So. Oh yeah, sure, <laughs> I can do that. Well, yeah, what we I must want. do if we're if we're gonna if if Exteena is gonna insist on that, what we need to do is make her do them, make her do some of the characters, oh. because she's so good at that. That's always oh, yeah, so entertaining. Yeah. Trust me, so oh, entertaining. Yeah. <laughs> I'll have to <laughs> give him the link to that show that was just it was awful. You don't want to hear it. You don't want to, but you know. You no, it is. It's so. probably the best, probably the one of the best shows we've ever done. It was, it was just so brilliant. <laughs> oh <laughs> it yeah. It was real. It was just real. <laughs> it was. It was. Um. So tell us real quick where we can find you online, Ernie. You can find me at ErnestDempsey.net um, or on facebookcom slash Dempsey. There's no A in Ernest. It's just E R N E S T, and. Uh, that's it. That's where you can find me. I don't use Twitter much except to troll uh, other sports fans. So, <laughs> what sport? What sport, real quick? Um, I'm an Atlanta United season ticket holder, uh, an Atlanta Falcons season ticket holder. So, soccer and football, baseball too, and hockey baseball. and Nashville. So. Yeah, soccer. <laughs> Yay! We could talk soccer. Yep. That'd be great. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Okay, well, I will get your links put up on our Facebook page. If anybody wants to stalk you, they can go there and do it. And, again, I want to thank you so much for coming on the show, and I'll be yeah. stalking you to book you to come back. Thank you. Do it. I'd be happy to. And I won't it, mess it, up it, the it. time this time. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm still – the whole time zone thing is alien to me, so um, you're in good company there. But it's, it's, been, it's been an absolute pleasure, and thank you so much for joining us. Yeah. Thanks for having me, guys. Thank you. Bye. And we'll speak to you again very soon.
Okay. Have a good yeah. e- have a good evening. <laughs> night. Bye. Okay. <laughs> good night. Bye bye. Right, and we will be right back after uh, after these messages, as they say in you know in proper shows and whatnot. <laughs> Radio Show is sponsored by Hellbot Books, purveyors of all manner of dark fiction. You can find the publisher along with links to all their available works across platforms at hellbondbookspublishing.com. Hellbond Books is proud to be the first in the indie publishing business with a very own app on both Google Play and the App Store. In the mood for something steamy to read, check out new erotica author Jennifer Lynn's website at jenniferlynnerotica.com. You can find James at his website, www.jameslongmore.com, and Xtina has an author page found on the Help on website. Don't forget to follow the Panic Room Radio Show on social media. Our Facebook page, unofficial, the Panic Room Radio Show, Twitter at Panic Room Radio, our YouTube channel, the new Panic Room Radio Show, and come visit our website at www.panicroomradio.com. <laughs> the air well it's sounding very professional tonight we're really gonna have to stop that um <laughs> so hey xd i've been i've been because i've been dying to i love i love to put you on the spot so here we what's go what's new pussycat whoa, 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 whoa. 
So, hey, <laughs> and you have no idea. Well, I'll tell you what's new, Pussycat, is we, um, uh, we at the Hellbound Books uh, Publishing, LLC, um, announced um, our uh, uh, anthologies for the whole year. I mean, an exhaustive yeah. list, but these, these are sort of the half dozen that um, we're running with so far. And they're, they're, what, what, a, what a cornucopia of anthologies. You probably haven't bothered to look, have you? You know, um, you've not. Uh, no, I, don't, don't, don't try and waffle around it. You haven't. <laughs> what we have is just this disgrace. You really are absolutely. I don't know why I bother sometimes. I really don't. Uh, we have well, probably my favourite one that we're actually working with with Brett McCormick again, who um, we did Schlock Horror with last year, which is a phenomenal, phenomenal anthology. We're calling it the, the Toilet Zone, and the idea is not. The theme isn't toilets. The idea is each story is to be um, sort of a, a sit-down length. Um, we uh, we're being scientific, and and here's a little is the science behind it, if you like. Um, the average time spent on the toilet is ten to fifteen minutes. Uh, the average <laughs> reading speed being two hundred to two hundred fifty words. Therefore, the optimum length of story is two and a half to four thousand words. So that's wow. what we're looking for for this one. We're also going to accept some short, short, shorter stories, which we're going to call uh, flush fiction. Get it? <laughs> yeah, I for do. people who are just having a <laughs> people having a quick visit, obviously. So, um, so there's that one. Um, oh, so that's got to be my favourite. I've, 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 I might even submit to that myself, but um, that is I, good. I don't think yeah. you know whether I, 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 you know me, I can't write a sh story that short. Even my flash no. fiction is like 20,000 20, words, so I could struggle. Yeah, yeah. Mm, I could struggle. Um, all, they're, all, they're all on the website and the app as well. Get yourself the app, people. And um, we've already got um, submissions coming in. I don't know why, because we haven't officially announced them yet. But uh, mm -hmm. people, do you, people just know. I don't know why and how that happens, but um, it it's kind of spooky. Yeah. Kind of spooky. <laughs> so... Um, yeah, I, I'm trying to think of anything. I, I, I don't. I don't think I, I've watched a lot of TV this past week. I've been, I've been that busy. By the time I, mm -hmm. I, I get to bed, I'm, I, 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 my default setting at the moment, I, I'll flick Friends on, and I'll just because uh, I don't. I've seen them all. I, I, I'll. It's, it's, it's decent stuff to fall asleep in, you know. So, yeah. Um, yeah, that's my go-to. Yeah, Friends is my go-to you know, as well. I can't think of anything. I, I, I watched The Mist again because it just happened to be. I was flicking through and it just happened to be on. So I watched that. That's always a good go to. But um, no, no, it's been a bit. Um, I finished watching Night Flyers. That uh, finally finished uh, binge watching that. That was good. So yeah, yeah. I need. I need to get back. I need to create another few hours in a day. I think so I can fit some more TV in. I think. Yeah, that's see, we. <laughs> I don't think we watched anything this week. Um, we, TV watching is like Saturday and Sunday night. And, you know, I think we did a couple of episodes of Doctor Who and a couple of episodes of The Handmaid's Tale. And I don't think oh, we watched TV yeah. the rest of the week. Yeah, yeah. It's getting good, too. Yeah. I'm, we're only, I'm only on the first season, and it's, it, it's really good. Oh, really? Good. Like, it, it's, good. The second yeah. season is, is as good as the I, I hope I'm hoping there'll be a third season. I, I'm, I'm not sure if there is or not, but, um, you know, there's a lot more they can do with the the whole theme. So, but I, it was incredibly well done. What well, once I once I got past, you know, the thinking it was a period drama, thinking it was like I Downtown know. Abbey or something. I can't believe I did that. Seriously, <laughs> what am I like, eh? What am I like? So, anywho, 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 anywho. Um, what's coming up next? Coming up next, we have award-winning author of urban fantasy, multi-genre, and southern gothic tales, Nancy A. Collins. Woo! Hello, Most Nancy. Best. Are you there? Hey, no, yes, thank I'm you here. for joining Can you us. Thank you for joining us. Oh, we well, can. can, you, I'm can also you, a comic book writer. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, <laughs> can you hear me? This could go on all night. No, I can hear you. Okay. <laughs> We've, okay. We have you. How, how are you this evening? 
I'm fine. I, I was going to say I'm also a comic book writer. Oh, um, fantastic! So, Christina missed that out. You know, you, you can't get that stuff. You really can't. <laughs> Damn I me. didn't see that. I didn't see that on the Amazon, uh, uh, your your bio. I, I That's where I get my info, you know, is it, from there. So I didn't see it there. Yeah. No, I used to, I used to write Swamp Thing. Oh, really? seriously? How cool. Yes. Wow. Well, I'm the only woman to have written Swamp Thing. Oh, wow. <laughs> I like Swamp uh, Thing. I did it for two years. <laughs> yeah, that's fantastic. So, I mean, you you write obviously across a lot of genres. But which where, where does your heart lie? Which is your favorite? Well, uh, I started off in horror, um, and um, that's what I'm primarily known for, I guess. Really, although I'm also kind of credited as being one of the authors who invented urban fantasy in the late '80s, early '90s. Back uh-huh. then, it was just called horror or fantasy, and you know there wasn't a, the bridge that there is now. Uh, but my first novel, Sunglasses After Dark, is now considered one of the first urban fantasy novels. I oh, read fantastic. that. I was, yes, I you know I was hoping she would bring that one up, and I I don't want to say when I read it because you know that's gonna you know make me feel really old because it was like a long time ago. Not, a, not as but, old as the fact that I wrote it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I looked it up to uh, see when it came out, and I was like, oh my gosh, I remember the cover. The the I think it was the the first cover, which wasn't it. I don't even remember now, but it was the I think it was the first cover, and that caught my eye and. That's what. That's why I picked it up with the cover. And I remember. Yeah, yeah. The first cover how, was all white. It was white. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. And had no typography on it whatsoever. Just yep. a just a yep. what, just so a cool. character's face. Yeah, it was so cool. It was, and I remember. I still. I I can't be positive, but I believe I was still like living at home, and I remember it was the first book that had like erotic scenes in it that that I had read and it was a vampire thing. And I was like, oh, I have to read this. I can't let my mom know that I'm reading this. And it was so cool. It was, it was great. It was probably <laughs> my, first, uh, my first, you know, into the, the, the dark, um, you know, erotica stuff. It, it was great though. I loved it. Well, I'm, I'm not ashamed to say that this year, 2019 is the 30th anniversary of the book's publication. Wow. Wow. Yeah. That's awesome. Congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, yeah, that, that's the one I got. I, I got all the awards for uh, the and the character Sonya Blue is Sonya Blue. Yeah, been in, yeah, the female punk vampire slash vampire slayer. Um, mm-hmm. And um, there's a, there's been five or six. Um, I'm, I'm working on the seventh book in the series uh, right now, and uh, along. Uh, and there's uh there's we've got some uh, some uh, I don't want to say hollywood because it's not really hollywood but we've, but um we've got some media involvement in in developing that right now so um, oh, wow. hopefully for a streaming Fantastic. series but uh but I've been poked with a stick numerous times <laughs> <laughs> uh, by Hollywood uh, regarding this character, we'll, we'll see if this is one that actually manages to 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 make it into the big or small screen. Yeah, so, fingers okay. crossed. Fingers crossed. Because I mean, Hollywood Hollywood is is not necessarily Hollywood anymore. You know, I mean, it's obviously with streaming. I mean, and Atlanta is. Um, I I still have a bunch of friends sort of and around the movie industry. And Atlanta seems yeah, to be where he's at the moment, you know. Oh, right. Yes, yeah, so you, you know it's the place to be for movies at the moment. I think it's because the, oh, yeah. I, there's a, uh, lot, uh, a lot of incentives shooting, going about. Mm-hmm. They were shooting Walking Dead uh, about a mile from my house this week. Wow. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> nice one. <laughs> now, speaking of vampires um, with, you know, sunglasses after dark, what is your favorite, like, you know, maybe movie vampire or uh, even, you know, TV? Like, were you a Buffy fan or, you know? Uh, I I um, never watched Buffy, to tell you the truth, because that was coming out when I was doing most of my Sonya Blue novels. So I kind of steered clear of that um, for 
you know, my own protection. <laughs> um, right. But, but uh, in terms of um, when I was younger, uh, things like Dark Shadows was a big influence. Um, yeah. uh, uh, one of my favorite vampire movies is uh, Near Dark. Uh, Good one. Uh, no, yeah, yeah, I, I've since one, yeah. become I've since become friends with the guy uh, who was the screenwriter for both. Uh, he wrote both Near Dark and The Hitchhiker. Uh, Eric uh, Red. Oh wow! Cool. Uh, but, the, but probably the biggest influence on me when I was younger was the Marvel comic uh, t- uh, Tomb of Dracula, which is where mm-hmm. Blade came from. Oh, I like Blade. Yeah, yeah, that that was that was back back, back during the 1970s. Uh, the the, art, uh, the writer was Marv Wolfman, and the artist was Gene Cohen, and that ran for like years. And mm-hmm. uh, uh, but that's where where uh, Blade first popped up. And back then he was more he was more like Shaft as opposed to like you know like Wesley Snipes. <laughs> Mm-hmm. So, you know, so, so he kind of he kind of evolved over the over the over the decades, um, but uh, but yeah, that was a that was a huge influence. And plus, all the uh, Hammer uh, films with Christopher Lee. Oh, know, do you know, those, I those I grew were, up on those. That was my childhood. Oh yeah, the whole Hammer horrors. Yeah, that was my that was mine as well. Uh huh. Yeah. 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 And yeah, it, yeah, I've yeah, said yeah, before. Yeah. I mean. I, I used I used to stay up uh, late, so I sort of sat down. My parents would go to bed, and I'd leave me down. This is back in the old days when the house had one TV. It was in the in the living room, and it was yeah. funny. My mum always always seemed to need to get up to go for a glass of water downstairs, and we had taps upstairs <laughs> and everything, you know. Um, when the when the sex scene was on, when there's an orgy scene on, or Ingrid Pitt was getting her clothes off, it's like, every time, you know. And I'm I'm sat there, you know. It's sort of my sort of. You know, 11, 12, 13, you know, so watching these nudity, gratuitous nudity. Oh, seriously. And I'm sure she, I'm sure she timed it. I'm sure she did. Well, yeah, all, well, none of that actually popped up on the American pets on television, but, uh, <laughs> but, uh, I did get to, but I did get to see almost all of those movies in the theater at the time. Um, uh-huh. uh, 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 you know, I, I grew up in the time where, you know, you used they, you know, there was one theater and it had a huge screen, and um, yep. and on Saturday afternoons, uh, uh, basically from uh, ten o'clock in the morning until three in the afternoon, it was nothing but horror movies on uh, every Saturday, and and that's that's where I was, and, and there was Hammer Hammer films and old AIPs uh, like the, the Roger Corman stuff. Japanese um, monster movies like Godzilla um, uh-huh. and, and everything in between, you know, plus a lot of, you know, so, so I've kind of, that was, that was where I was exposed to a lot of the hammer horror stuff it was actually on the, and, and the amicus stuff too, that kind of felt that followed it all the English anthology films. Uh, no. It was actually in the theater. One of my first vampire uh, movies was Fright Night. I loved Fright Night. I had such a crush on Jerry Dandridge. I thought he was so hot. Um, <laughs> that movie was good. Yeah, they did a remake. Sorry, too. are we are we talking are we talking the original, the one with Roddy McDowell in it, yeah, or the, the, re- yeah, the, the Colin yeah, Farrell remake? Branded. Which yeah, because no, the, the, no. the remake the remake was pretty good actually. Uh, the Colin Farrell yeah. one, I, I kind of enjoyed that. I haven't had, I haven't had a, a chance job. to see that one. Yeah, you know, it's, I, didn't it's, mind. I don't think it's as good as the original, but it, 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 they, they oh, had a fair no. stab at it. They had a fair yeah. go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because I think that the original was, it, it was a little bit spoofy, you know what I mean? It was a little bit silly, and I don't think they, that was, um, that came across in the, the, the remake. I thought the remake was good. But the original Fright Night, it, it was a, I think it was a little spoofy, and, and it I was a it little was, bit, yeah, yeah. Just well, do you know yeah. that they they did the same with the Evil Dead? I mean, the original Evil Dead had that that vein of dark humor in it, and they sucked it all out of the remake. I know <laughs> Sam Raimi um, directed again, but it just took all the humor out of it. 
And that yeah, was a big no, part. No, I, I don't think I don't think Ramey directed that. He he produced it. I produced it. Um, yeah, but he was still invo- yeah, he was I, involved. Yeah, I think, enough I think to, it was the guy spoiler. who directed um, the remake of of uh, uh, The Hills Have Eyes. Did that? Uh, yeah. Right. But it, 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 I mean, it was it was okay. But nah, nah, spoiled it. Spoiled it. <laughs> But, but, the, but, but Ash versus the Ash versus the Evil Dead is is you know you know I, I need to watch that <laughs> I need to everybody said I've got to watch that if if that's a heart back to the like you said the the, the darker humor then I I really need to make an effort to watch that oh yeah it's yeah hilarious <laughs> I, I will I will. <laughs> I like gross as well. <laughs> oh yeah, the, well the well the 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 corn uh, the autopsy scene uh, in the, I think it's in the second season will will definitely live up to expectations uh, or down. Um, but uh, uh, yeah, uh, Ash versus the Evil Dead. Uh, I actually uh, I wrote a the last comic I I've done uh, was a. a Army of Darkness miniseries for Dynamite. Wow. So, awesome. Yeah. Well, I, awesome. Want about, I want to hear more about your book. You're here to talk to us about Absalom's Wake. Can you tell us yes. about it? Yes. Yes, Absalom's Wake is a uh, uh, my most my most recent novel. Um, it's uh, it's a weird whaling novel. Uh, which is basically the 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 conceit is if what if what if uh, Herman Melville had created the Cthulhu mythos instead of H.P. Lovecraft? Excellent! And, what a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> and, I like that. <laughs> uh, but in, but instead of like writing, in, it, it's written. In Melville, as close to Melville style, without it actually being um, Moby Dick. <laughs> but um, uh, but basically, uh, it kind of combines elements of of Moby Dick, Billy Budd, um, uh, Taipei, and uh, Redburn, uh, uh, with, uh, along with wow. elements elements of uh, Lovecraft. And um, uh, without being explicitly, Cthulhu is never mentioned by name, but the, the theory being, if Melville had written it, he wouldn't have called it Cthulhu. <laughs> so, but, um, but but keeping it more in feel in, with the fact that Melville himself, unlike Lovecraft, had actually been to the South Pacific, and had lived with you know, the natives mm-hmm. and been with, you know, that's how he became famous is basically because he survived living with cannibals for, you know, like the better part of a year. Um, and we're, yeah. and writing, you know, basically what were, you know, travelogues, um, until he wrote Moby Dick and then everyone hated that and he stopped writing. Oh, <laughs> 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 <I don't know. laughs> But uh, you have a, <laughs> the the con, the conceit for behind Albus Holmes Wake or the, the premise is that the, it's a first person story uh, told by the sole survi- uh, the sole survivor of the SS Absalom, which was a whaling ship, and he, at the time he's he's a young man, he's like sixteen, seventeen years old, runs off to to uh, to uh, make his way as a on a whaling ship because he grew up uh, listening to his his uncle uh, tell all these you know amazing stories about well his time on out in the South Pacific when he was on a whaler and when he when his uncle dies he leaves him his sea chest a letter of recommendation to a captain his old captain and uh, an amulet uh, that's uh, carved from coral that resembles a, a, a dolphin. That's uh, mm-hmm. so he takes all these three things and goes to and goes a whaling, uh, and um, 
and the, the, from there on in, it starts involving things like where sharks and where dolphins and wow. uh, so and, the, and, the, uh, and the king of the ocean, uh, uh, Tangaroa, the, uh, the, uh, the 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 um, the god of the whales and the god of the uh, the sea and, and creatures called the ocean born, which mm-hmm. are uh, kind of like. Um, uh, my uh, it, the Lovecraft's Lovecraft's creatures were from outer space. Ex- you know, even Cthulhu is theoretically from outer space, even though they look like a giant octopus. Um, <laughs> but with this, the idea is if Melville had created the mythos, everything would have just come from the ocean instead of from outer space. So these things don't walk between the stars like the old ones and the elder gods or whatever these are um these are the ocean born that that emerge from the uh, born and from the depths of the ocean so, awesome i want to hear more about it do you have a reading for us uh yeah uh i've got a little passage here um uh the the only setup i have is that the the young narrator whose name is jonah um uh is his, he's having his first um, um, shore leave, mm-hmm. uh, and he and his he and his uh, good his good friend Santo, who um, the ship's cooper, go off onto uh, onto the island, and they meet up with um, uh, a Englishman, uh, uh, a remittance man. Basically, he's a bit sent. sent sent there by his family to be out of the way <laughs> and um uh and and he's invited them to come to his place and they get drunk and they pass out on his porch mm-hmm. and um and he has a weird dream and um uh, and w- about the this giant whale that they're hunting that called king jim and okay. uh, and it wakes him up and uh it, and he basically what they'd they'd run across a couple of some seen some cannibals earlier uh in the day while hanging out at at the bar and uh uh and so the the, the it starts off with him waking up and discovering that these cannibals have followed followed them back to this guy's hut so, wow okay it's all yours all right Okay. The one-eyed headman stepped forward while the others pinned the cooper's arms to his side, keeping him from rolling free of the hammock and bared his horrible, filed teeth. The cannibal's mouth seemed to grow to hideous proportions like a snake unhinging its jaw before he bit deep into Santo's exposed belly. The cooper's angry shouts as quickly dissolved into shrieking, the likes of which I had never heard from a human being. As I lay there in the shadows, paralyzed with horror, the one-eyed cannibal yanked free a length of my friend's guts, causing them to unravel from his torso like a magician's scarf. The savage then swallowed the mouth full of pulsing living flesh whole without the use of his hands, his throat seeming to expand as he gulped down the hideous meal. Excited by the smell of their victim's blood and the sight of his agonized thrashing, the remaining cannibals set upon poor doomed Santo ripping into his struggling body like a pair of boars rooting for truffles. Get off my porch, you bloody bastards, his lordship yelled as he charged out of the bungalow, armed with a native paddle spear fashioned of koa wood. The Englishman attempted to brain the one-eyed cannibal with the oar blade, but his opponent proved to be far too swift. The savage dodged the blow while sweeping the aristocrat's legs out from under him, causing his lordship to drop the weapon. The cannibal headman then snatched up the paddle spear and drove its business end through his lordship's chest, pinning him like a butterfly. The sight of the blood spurting from the dying man's mouth like the crimson geyser in my nightmare shocked me from my paralysis. Leaping to my feet, I ran towards the beach in the direction of the Absalom. As I sped along the sandy beach, I heard angry shouts behind me. I glanced over my shoulder and instantly wished I had not looked. The trio of cannibals were in close pursuit, their tattooed faces smeared with the blood of my friends, their horrible shark-like maws opened impossibly wide as if to swallow me whole. Yikes. And... That was great. <laughs> no good stuff. That was a nice bit of nice bit of gore there. I love that. 
Yeah, yeah, it. <laughs> yeah, that. Well, when you're dealing with, you know, you know, you, you, you got to bring it with the cannibals, you know. Oh, yeah, you you can't go they, wrong with cannibals. Yeah. <laughs> well, especially if they happen to be wear sharks on top of it, so. <laughs> I love I love that that is I mean why why have why is Sci Fi Channel not done wear sharks yet I mean you know they should do that Well they may have I just <laughs> they actually they yeah, they did um, they did one it was a cross I forget what they called it was a cross between a killer whale and a wolf it wasn't it didn't transform it was like a mix of the two and that was that was it was one of those it was so bad it was good you know it was um yeah <laughs> but i like the way shark eye that is that is tremendous yeah that's, that's all, all that's actually just taken from polynesian myth i mean they're they they have um a lot of a, a lot of stories about sharks taking the form of men and coming up on land uh, so, yeah, you know, they're they're shark gods and things like that. So there's, I did a lot of research and um, uh, tried to incorporate as much of it as I could into the story to make it give it a little bit of a, a bit of a feel. <coughs> but um, no, but, so but, yeah, uh, uh, Absalom's is it's available through um, both as the ebook and uh, and print. Through uh, uh, Amazon, uh, uh, the print edition is. Uh, uh, we, we've just now made it available in print as of as of uh, as of December, and wow. uh, it's through Macabre Inc., which is a, a branch of uh, Crossroad Press. And mm-hmm. um, we're uh, the it, we're in the process of changing the covers. Uh, it still has the old cover on it, but we're getting a new cover by Bob Eckleton. I got stand on it uh, sometime in the next week. We, we're hopefully we'll get the, get that uh, uh, up onto the uh, up and changed onto uh, Amazon uh, by next week. Mm. So and but, what but, you say you're working on now? Uh, right now, I am writing a. Um, I'm doing two things right now. Um, I'm doing a work for hire. Uh, original Vampirella novel for Dynamite uh, Entertainment. Um, I also wrote Vampirella for a, about a year and a half, two years um, <laughs> recently, and uh, now I'm doing a prose novel for them, kind of a tie-in. Um, mm. I don't, I don't know if it's going to be in print. I do know it will be available as ebook, but I'm, I'm not 100 percent sure if they're if they're going to print uh, do a, make a print edition of probably will. I mean, but. But it's probably going to be an ebook first, um, and I'm, I'm basically working on that right now. And it's a more the more uh, quote unquote traditional Vampirella, where she's from outer space. Is they keep changing her origin on her. So, but I'm uh, but I'm kind of writing it as a as a uh, uh, kind of a space opera. Yeah, uh, well, you know, I'm yeah. I'm trying to make it a thing now where all of our uh, authors who come on the show who um, write about vampires ever, I I want to know from them what they think about the Twilight Sparkly Vampires. <laughs> <laughs> well, wow! Like uh, <laughs> uh, basically, uh, you know, my my motto is no, you know, no sparkling. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, uh, bas- uh, but to be perfectly blunt, I th- it, it Twilight came very close to killing vampire fiction in the English language. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, uh written for anything but outside of the young adult market. It, it became after tw- yeah. it became impossible to sell a vampire novel after Twilight came out. Especially yeah. one that vampires that aren't, you know, like you have Buffy's, but you know, and and on Buffy they had some really hot vampires, you know, Angel was hot, Spike was hot, and then you have the Vampire Diaries, and again, I think it's like Stepan and Damon or something, and they were both, you know, hot vampires. So then you try to actually write a a real vampire novel with you know scary vampires, and nobody wants that, you know, they want the, I guess they want the teen heartthrob vampire, and you know they're not well, fun. Well, 
they are. Oh, well, <laughs> or, or people have got. I, it, it's it, it's going to take. A, it, the scary vampires are slowly making a comeback because. Um, but it, it'll take a while. Uh, it'll take a. But, but yeah, the Twilight did a lot of damage. Mm, um, yeah. Uh. <laughs> I, I and, and it, it and it may have done it permanently for in, in terms of prose, um, but you know movies and television are a lot more flexible, um, right? And and forgiving. Um, so in sometimes publishing doesn't doesn't lead the way it should, <laughs> and and, and right. more follows trends. Yeah. You know, so. But um, but uh, it, but yeah, Twilight did a lot of damage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know I can't say that I hated it, but you're right. I mean, it, it really, um, you know, that's not what vampires are. You know, they're not sparkly. They're not nice and sweet, and so yeah, they don't they don't um, they don't sparkle. <laughs> no. I <laughs> But we are just about out of time for our show, and it went by way too fast. And I have to, I have to beg you to come back. I want to book you to come back for a whole show, um, and then we'll just sit and talk about vampires and and wear sharks and and everything else. I I I, 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 I want to wear a shark, 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 shark. Like I, I, I need, I need that in my life, definitely. No, no sparkly ones. <laughs> you're doing your robot voice, yeah. You're, <laughs> I know, and I, and I think I, I felt his need to really tell you he wanted wear sharks, you know. Uh, so you, you have to promise to come back, and we, we need more wear sharks, okay? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, I, yeah. There's, there's, there's definitely not enough, you know, wear sharking out there. So. Right. <laughs> okay, so tell us. Well, thanks for we'll find you online. Well, thanks for having me. Oh. Okay, um, I will. I'll get your links put up on our Facebook page, and um, again, I'll be stalking you to come back to our show. And thank you so okay. much for coming on, Nancy. Thank you. No and problem. Yeah. This, this is the time of the show where John uh, James would say, "Say good night, Xtina." So good night, Xtina. <laughs> I'm the boss,